There are people on social media saying that these new updated bivalent COVID boosters were only tested on mice and not on humans before they were authorized. Is this true? Is it not? And if it's true, what does it mean? Is it dangerous? Well, I'm going to jump, jump right to the bottom line, guys. It's actually true. Yeah, it's true. These new bivalent COVID boosters were tested on mice, not on humans before they were authorized. But before you turn off the video and say, see, I told you so, before you do that, um, I want you to hear why this may not be as big of a deal as some are making it out to be. By the way, guys, I'm Dr. Jen Caudill, practicing family physician, on-air health expert, and video creator. Now, first of all, we need to go back and remember what the deal is with this bivalent booster. It contains uh, strains of the original um, COVID strain and then the Omicron BA4 and BA5 uh, strains as well. We decided relatively recently that we needed an updated COVID booster that not only got the original strain, but also dealt with BA4 and BA5 because uh, these are the dominant strains right now. They are affecting infecting and affecting lots of people, and we need this like now. However, in addition to realizing that we need this booster with these strains, we also realized that if it took too long to make this booster, we actually might miss the window of opportunity to protect people. In other words, if it took months and months and months and months and months to do all the studies and all the, the trials and everything, we might not have a booster until it's actually too late. So this is actually one of the main reasons why this COVID booster was studied in mice and not in humans. There simply was not enough time uh, to conduct human trials. Again, if we did, we might have missed the window of opportunity. And remember how much COVID changes. I mean, these uh, variants become a lickety split, right? So if it took months, we might be onto the new variant, uh, the next variant, uh, while waiting for the vaccine for this one. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, so this makes it okay to cut corners? I mean, so this makes it okay to not do human clinical trials? So we're okay with this? I completely get it. I totally do. But this is the thing. I'm not sure that it's actually cutting corners, and many others don't think it's cutting corners either, uh, aka the CDC, FDA, etc. Let me explain why. Okay, let's first go back and remember that our original COVID vaccines and the vaccines that we have, they have undergone rigorous testing in human trials like buku okay not only that but they've been given to millions of people so we have data from that as well and keep in mind that these new updated bivalent covid boosters targeting ba4 and ba5 actually use the same mrna technology as the previous covid19 vaccines and they have a lot i mean a lot of similar components which by the way is good the other thing is that many experts actually remind us that it's common even for updated vaccines to go through less rigorous testing in part due to the similarities they may have with their predecessor, the vaccine that came before them. And you might not have known this, but this actually happens with the flu shot. That's right. Dr. Scott Roberts, who's a Yale Medicine infectious disease physician, said in an online Yale Medicine publication that the flu vaccine is reformulated each year based only on animal studies for the same reasons. He then goes on to say that if we waited for human data for the flu shot every year, many people would have already gotten infected with the flu before that shot was even developed. And guys, what good does that do? Time is of the essence here. So given the need for this updated uh, bivalent COVID booster and the fact that we um, needed it ASAP, the FDA has been looking at human clinical trial data for the original COVID-19 vaccine, as well as human trial data for a vaccine targeting BA1, that's the original strain, strain of Omicron. The FDA has also based its decision to authorize the updated boosters based on data from animal experiments from previous vaccines and data from the updated BA4, BA5 boosters tested on mice. So I hope this is all making sense. I'm saying that if we hadn't done it this way, we may not have received these boosters so fast and hopefully in time to protect a lot of people. Now, look, I'm not saying that this is a perfect system. Guys, in a perfect world, we would have all the data we need, human data, animal data, whatever, as fast as we needed it to make decisions about vaccines, et cetera, all the time. But that's not simply what we have here. But remember, this system is one that we've used with other vaccines. It's not exactly new. Now, despite this, some scientists are a little skeptical and some still feel that waiting for human data would have been best. I can't necessarily disagree with that. Uh, I should also say that this is the type of thing, like this type of rigmarole is exactly what makes people skeptical. It's what makes people like you or me or anyone else say, are they trying to pull a fast one on me? Um, it's the reason why I'm doing this video, uh, right? Because people have felt or wondered or worried rather that animal studies were just not enough. You know, public perception does matter. But this is not a new process. 
And many scientists, including the CDC, FDA, do believe it's safe and effective. Of course, we will uh, continue to gather more data. And while there's no human data now, there will be. Um, and I should also say, look, full disclosure, as a family doctor, I received this bivalent booster and I recommend it to my patients. In fact, I give it in the office. So this is why some people online have been saying that the bivalent booster was not tested in uh, humans, only in animals. But as you can see, it may not be as bad as people have been making it out to be. Uh, guys, I'm Dr. Jen. I want to know what you think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Write in the comments. Let me know if you got the vaccine, what you think, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm Dr. Jen Cottle. For those of you on Facebook, please like and follow my page. Um, also, for those of you who send stars, I respond to you personally. Thank you so much. On YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for updates. And guys, check out my website drjencoddle.com. You can sign up for my free health newsletter. And also I have a new offering called Dr. Jen's Daily Health Tips, where you can receive um, a new health tip in your inbox every single day. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen. I'll see you soon.